What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. With this video, we are jumping into Flashpoint Beyond, issue number 3. This story has been continuing on Flashpoint, with Thomas Wayne not really sure how this existence is here, how his world is still alive. We have seen him become much more frantic, much more violent, doing everything he can to ensure that his world does not exist, trying to find out who is responsible. He is doing everything he can to ensure that Bruce Wayne exists. But in an alleyway, we find Thomas Wayne face to face with the Kryptonian might of Subject 1. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, you've liked this video, buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we get into issue number 3, we are picking up at the destruction of Krypton, the planet dying. They send Kal-El out into to the stars. As he is an infant making his way through the cosmos, we see that this is not the only ship that went out, but his ship, it landed on Earth, crashing directly into Metropolis. It was absolute devastation. On that day, 35,000 civilians had been killed, and the city of Metropolis, it was decimated. This story is all being told on the news. A TV in the background where we have Penguin and our young Dent child. In the last issue, I talked about how I think Dent is going to be lined up to be the next Robin. The Robin for Thomas Wayne. It really seems like it's heading in that direction. But we're going to talk more about that once we get to the end of the issue. While they are sitting here teaching him how to pick locks, this is where we see an image of Earbud Thon saying that he needs Thomas Wayne, that something is coming for him. And then he mentions hyper time. As quickly as he came in is as fast as he leaves. Not really sure what that was. We are taken over to subject one, standing toe to toe with our Batman. Thomas Wayne doesn't really want anything to do with him, but subject one, he is letting him know that he needs his help. As he goes to walk away, subject one grabs him by the shoulder and we see Thomas Wayne punch subject one in the face. In doing so, he fractured his wrist. And with Batman not wanting to come with him, not wanting to hear out any kind of reason, Subject 1 knocks him clean out. That's where we pick up with Gilda Dent. Her face is just torn to crap. We see the birth of Two-Face for the Flashpoint universe. We see her decline into madness. A mother just wanting to get back to her son, the son that is now under the protection of Thomas Wayne. Picking up with Thomas Wayne waking up after being knocked out, we have Poison Ivy, now being part of the Parliament of Trees. He has been brought to the only safe place on Earth, a place known as the Oasis. Subject 1 had reached out to them to create this place, this sanctuary, a safe haven for people like them that are displaced, that are lost in this world, and it offers them protection. But it wasn't the Superman or Poison Ivy that built this place. It was Jason Woodrue, aka the Swamp Thing. As he talks to Subject 1, Swamp Thing is letting it be known that they have food, but must expand the green further to accommodate some of the European refugees that they have got in. He says that he is atoning for his sins. Now this is when Thomas Wayne, he goes up to the Superman and he lets him know that you need to take me back to Gotham and you need to do it now. I don't care what you need, I don't care about the help that you want, but what we find out is that there were some crystals located on the outskirts of Metropolis. These crystals, they are information hubs, something that should have been implanted into Subject 1's brain when he first got here. It is Kal-El's father, that if he is able to see this, that means there is a possibility that the rest of the Kryptonians could also live here, saying that there is still hope to find a new home before theirs self-destructs, being sent to his assigned world just like all of the other children, saying it could be their new home. His mission upon adulthood is to use his powers to disarm the humans in advance of an arrival from Krypton, and he plans to conquer the entire planet 
as father and son. This is when Thomas Wayne understands an invasion is coming. They have five days before the Kryptons make their arrival, with Kal-El trying to ask Thomas Wayne, will you help us? But the truth is, Thomas Wayne, he's like, what do you want me to do? What could I possibly do? What they want to do is gather the forces build up an army in these five days, something that might be able to stand off this invasion. Now Kal-El, he has grown up with these people. He understands what Earth is. Even though they experimented on him, they tortured him for years. He knows the true potential of what humanity is. Wanting to bring Cyborg, Element Woman, Starman all back together. They want some kind of chance against this Kryptonian army. Thomas Wayne, he tells him no, because if there is an invasion coming, that means he has five days to complete his mission. And unfortunately for Subject 1, his mission has nothing to do with his. That's when we pick up in the apartment of Iris West. And that is because the Clockwork Killer has struck again. This time, he is Eobard Thawne, trying to come to Iris West, trying to be saved in any way he can. Eventually, the Clockwork Killer caught up with him. With Thawne taken out of the equation, we jump over to Hypertime. This is where we pick up with Jeff and Bonnie, making their way through Hypertime. They see the paradox. They see the resets. Not sure if Thomas Wayne was responsible, this is when they recognize recognize that it was Thawne, trying to find Rip Hunter, and also trying to get back to the other side of the continuum. What we learn is that the Omniverse may be relatively more stable than Hypertime, but its multiverses, they are being besieged by the Great Darkness, which we see going on in Dark Crisis. And so this is altering things, trying to steer clear from all the Omniverse, until the Justice League returns and the darkness passes thinking that maybe, maybe Rip Hunter has been caught by Pariah. Not really sure if he was involved in this or not. The only thing that they can hope for is that Rip Hunter doesn't make it worse. Because Hypertime, it has enough problems without Thomas Wayne still around. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. The next issue is said to be Dexter Dent, Robin the Boy Terror. So what I think we're gonna see is a version of Robin much more like Thomas Wayne. And I cannot freaking wait. You know, I was I was really curious on if this was going to connect into Dark Crisis. Because the truth is, Thomas Wayne shouldn't be alive after he got hit by Omega Beams sent from Darkseid. We believed that he was dead, but somehow he finds himself back in the Flashpoint universe. But things are not how they should be. Barry Allen is dead. Eobard Thawne is dead. There is a killer on the loose known as the Clockwork Killer. And in Hypertime, they are more than aware of the great darkness that is about to be down on them. In previous issues, what we had seen is Bruce Wayne also trying to bring Thomas Wayne back. Now, the Bonnie and Jeff, they are both in hypertime, so they could be, they're, they're seeing things on a whole different scale than Thomas Wayne or Bruce Wayne would. So it's possible that Bruce Wayne and the Justice League, they haven't died yet when we are inside Bruce Wayne's timeline. But in hypertime, in Thomas Wayne's timeline, they already know this stuff has happened. You know, time travel is such a confusing concept when you're, when you're jumping from one to the other, when you have infinite and infinite universes, and then you have billions and trillions and quadrillions of planets. But I like this uh, this idea of Krypton sending out all of these children prior to the destruction of Krypton, trying to find a new home and conquer whatever beings may be living there. And with only five freaking days until the invasion, we already know that Thomas Wayne is willing to do anything to ensure that the Flashpoint universe does not exist. We are seeing a very desperate, a very frantic Thomas Wayne willing to do anything, willing to push it to the absolute limits because he knows that this universe should not exist. And so if this place should not exist, that means that there are no rules. There are 
no limitations. We may just yet see the most violent, most brutal version of Thomas Wayne that has ever hit comic book pages. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get caught up on everything that has been going on with this story, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now if you can't do that, do me a favor, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you like this video, and until the next breakdown.